Welcome to the Wide for the Win live stream. Coming to you live from the Wide for the Win Facebook and YouTube channels. How many of you want to dance when you hear that music? Is it just me? <laughs> me. Uh, okay, yeah. you too. You can do the dance. I'll watch. <laughs> no, I'll embarrass myself dancing. Um, my name's Mark. I've got Susie and Sky with me here in the virtual studios from three different countries in this wide, wide world of ours. And three yeah. different continents. Yeah. Three different continents, even. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Yeah, very exciting. Well, no, no. Oh, yeah. Okay. Two different continents. Because yeah, we I'm haven't yet, thinking. yeah, we haven't yet called Canada a separate continent, but we're working on it. <laughs> Almost. You guys haven't asked land. So oh, ask us God. anything about wide publishing is is the topic today. This is just we we just thought it would be important because we have we have over what fourteen thousand people in the wide for the Wind group on Facebook, and we wanted to make sure that new people have had a yeah. chance to ask their questions because sometimes you ask a question, and let's be honest, Facebook doesn't always mm -hmm. show you things. Show <laughs> hey, someone responded to your to your question. Who knows? Who knew? Um, this is a this is a chance for you just to sort of ask those questions and don't be embarrassed if it's if it's a a basic question. So yeah. to kick us off, I'm mm -hmm. going to ask you guys some questions. Okay. Does that sound good? Okay. Unless you guys had scary. something you want to jump into. Yes, I want to jump into something. Why did you have whiskey in your in your picture today, Mark? Tell us all about it. Oh, what did you celebrate? Well, I celebrated something, and, and my apologies to Susie and other American authors who may be watching. But if you're an international author and always feeling left out, if you're from Canada or if you're from many countries around the world, uh, 36 countries around the world, in fact, you can, and in and, and Canada, at least between February and May, it is public landing right time, meaning in, in Canada, you have to go to, you can get to there from plrinternational.com, and it's basically publiclendingright.ca, and you can register your books as a Canadian author or author from, you know, 36 under co other countries, not, not the U.S., because I know, Sky, you have access to this too, but I got uh, a check from the Canada Council for the Arts for a public landing right, and what it is, is, is this is a multi-four-figure check that I get every year which is a listing they do. Uh, so you register your books, print books, um, ebooks, audiobooks, and you register them with the Public Landing Right Commission or Canada Council for the Arts here in Canada. And then they do a random polling of libraries across Canada. And uh, I think you can get a maximum of eight hits per format, per title. And what they do is they, it's basically money in lieu of royalties because the idea is that when a library purchases your book, yes, you get a sale to the library, but you don't necessarily get royalties off those because, you know, with an ebook or, you know, print book can maybe be loaned up 30 times before it wears out and they have to order a new one. But with an ebook, they can purchase it once. And, you know, at least from indie authors, they can borrow it as many times as uh, patrons can borrow it as many times. So this is kind of like lost royalties. And it's a really phenomenal check. And the, and the reason I like it is because it, it often, uh, the check would often come in around the time we're trying to pay off for an all expenses, March break, <laughs> tropical vacation. Not that we've done that since, you know, I think 2019 was the last time we did that. But uh, it, it came in around the time that the credit card bill uh, would come in for, for that. And, and it, it's it's a nice check. I was, I was talking to Sky about it earlier because even with, uh, so you can register traditionally published books or self-published books. You just have to put in the ISBN, et cetera. And your country, probably has different rules. And I, I'm, I'm going to ask Sky a little bit about how that works where you are, for, uh, maybe for other authors uh, for, from there. Uh, but um, the, the the cool thing uh, about this program is I get, you know, on royalties on, on a co-authored traditionally published book, I'll get a dollar a year, you know, every time the book sells. <laughs> but the PLR money I get every year from from public lending rights for the book being in the libraries. And, and again, a maximum of eight hits uh, I've actually earned more money uh, annually on royalties than I have in actual sales. You know, I mean, wow. obviously I got the advance up front, which wasn't that big. But Sky, Sky, how does that work? How does that work for you? So in the UK, we have two different kinds of agencies that we can register our books with. It's one is the normal public lending right, which is via the British Library. And they, I think it was last year that they came up with a new portal, which is a lot more user-friendly than before. Before it was... 
well, um, antique. And <laughs> it took a lot of patience to get your books up there. Now it's a lot better. Uh, and then there's also ALCS. Um, so we get two, really? two agencies and one of them does it once a year, I think, and the other twice a year. So in total, we get three payments. Um, really? Although for my genre, it always depends. I mean, with my books, they a lot of my romance sky books don't appear in a lot of libraries, especially because they only have a very small amount of libraries that they use for their kind of samples. And if you're not in those sample libraries, it doesn't matter if you are in your local library, if your local library is in a, a test one. So it is a bit annoying oh, that way. Okay. Because you have to get your books into those sample libraries. And there are people who try to like manipulate <laughs> the rules a little by, yeah, trying to get their books into that particular library because they know that it's a sample one. Um, but my children's books, I do get some nice uh, payments twice a year, three times a year for my children's books, because of course they are more likely to be in libraries than my steamy alien romance. Uh, I love that. I love that. <laughs> but it's totally um, worth um, registering for sure. So when you talked about it being clunky, I know here in Canada, so for example, if you go to publiclandingright.ca, you, you go and you print off, uh, you pull down a PDF, you print it off, fill it out. <laughs> Or you know, on your computer and print it off, but then you have to mail it in, and 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 there's no online registry that you can see, and so I have to keep a photocopy of it, and I actually have a Google spreadsheet because I have so many books, and I was like, well, did I register this book? When did I register it? And then even looking at the at the form I got today, it actually said so. One of my traditionally published uh, novels, I had registered back in 2015, uh, the year it was published, and I never found it in libraries so they actually after five years of there not being any hits well maybe maybe i had hits the first two years but but again it's random sampling so it's different libraries every year and they randomly mm -hmm. uh, sample but it's been five years since they found this book in any libraries so they're like <laughs> we're taking it off the registry i'm like where what registry how come i don't have access to it where is it <laughs> okay ours is a mo lot more modern we just have an online form thing <laughs> Every time, Mark, that you talk about your public lending rights, I get so jealous that we don't have it in the U.S. Yeah. Like, oh, it's so cool. But anyhow, um, so I just posted in the Facebook group because um, I know for me, I didn't see anything about it until I went to go look. So I just posted another link. Um, so hopefully people will start joining us here because I'm still not seeing anybody. And usually by now we've got quite a few questions popping up. So. Um, well, we do have uh, we do have a number of people watching live uh, as well. I can see that you guys can't see the, that we've got a, no, we a, almost a dozen people watching live. So uh, again, if you have any questions, please go ahead and and post them in the comments. Yeah. But go but I think the reason public lending right doesn't exist in the U.S. is I know it exists in Canada because Canada Council for the Arts is awesome, and the 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 Writers Union of Canada, of which I am a member, they petitioned for it and they pushed really really hard to, to support mm -hmm. writers. and And I believe that the, the similar organization in the U.S. probably just saw, oh, libraries are cannibalizing book sales. We're not going to do anything positive about libraries or whatever. It just felt like a like I don't understand why they wouldn't push for it. But anyways. Um, yeah, oh, I see a comment. Yay. We're here. I know, I so people, like, Facebook here. users says we're here. Oh, uh, that's probably Aaron or something, right? No. <laughs> but if you if you didn't give permission to Streamyard, it's not gonna. We're not gonna know. So glad you're you're there. You you awesome person, whoever you are. <laughs> you awesome, widely <laughs> you. <laughs> you wide wide person. <laughs> um, so you no, know, I would actually not. I would love to see some beginning questions because we've had so many, we've had, I think 300 or so people join in the last few weeks. Um, and so we've been getting a lot more of the beginner questions in the group. So I'd right. love a chance for, you know, if you guys have the beginning questions, by all means, ask them, you know, we don't mind answering yeah. them repeatedly. <laughs> We'd so I, had, I, saw something, I saw something posted separately and thought maybe talk about it here is I think it was an author saying, hey, how do I get sales on Hoopla, right? Hoopla, one of the library mm -hmm. uh, platforms. Not library. how do you get your book published to Hoopla, but how do, if your books are listed, how do you, how do you get sales? Well, how do you get library sales? Speaking of libraries, what do you guys, what do you guys do? Motion. What's that? I'm still waiting for mine to get published to Hoopla. Mine <laughs> haven't actually gone through yet. So I don't know. I got, um, I got some there. 25% are there already. <laughs> Yay! Uh, 
No, but I do periodically get the draft to digital promotions for Hoopla. That's a great place mm-hmm. to start. They always are. Okay. Um, right. So that that would probably be my top tip until I can actually you know get there and try it and try and see <laughs> what works. Sky, didn't you have? Weren't you part of one of the Hoopla I, first free and series promos? I was just about to say that uh, one of my kids' books uh, that I write as Isla Winter, um, that one was in a freebie promo on Hoopla. And Drafted Digital were so really nice and made some lovely graphs for me. And just not not for me, but for the book um, to see the results. And my after that month of where one book was free, my sales across my that pen names catalog went up. Well, borrows on Hoopla, not sales. Right. Um, right. And so it was, I can't remember the exact percentage, but it was quite a high. To be fair, I wasn't getting a lot of um, borrows there before, um, and it definitely improved that. So, yeah, I can highly recommend any any promo you get for both right. Hoopla and, of course, all the others with uh, Overdrive and so on. But a hard-hitting question then. Okay, but but I don't have promos, or there's no promos right now. What do I do? <laughs> um, uh, I'll, I'll start with something that I recommend is... <laughs> Start with your local library. Find out what they use. Do they use Overdrive? Do they use Hoopla? Do they use Biblioteca? Do they use Baker and Taylor? There's a whole bunch of there. Our borrow box, depending on where you are in the world, right? Because the, the UK, <laughs> Ireland, uh, Australia, New Zealand have borrow box, but we don't have them here in Canada and uh, in the US. Uh, reach out to the library. Let them know. Say, hey, my books are, and, and what I strongly recommend you do is understand what a comp title comp author is, meaning comparable title or author saying. So, for example, if you write a certain type of book, find mm-hmm. a traditionally published author, a book you would find on a, on a local bookstore shelf or in the library that is probably a household name, like a big name author that people are familiar with. And and that your books are probably going to be for readers of this author. Yes, you can pick really awesome indie authors we love, like you know uh, Aaron, right? We, you know we we know and love Aaron, for example, you know, small small town romance. We're going to pick on Aaron because she's not here today. And even though she's hugely <laughs> successful and and has sold millions of books, she's not as well known as the author of Virgin River, small town romance. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm drawing a blank. Robin Carr. Robin Carr. Yeah, Robin Carr is my. Um, not as well known as Susie O'Connell, yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> but but, <laughs> yeah, but right. saying like, because when a library goes to buy that ebook uh, from Robin Carr, like Virgin River, let's say, for example, Small Town Romance, they can probably buy half a dozen books from Susie O'Connell, half a dozen books from Aaron Wright for the same price, mm-hmm. for a much lower price. So the library can spend, can satisfy more patrons to read all those great books um Mm -hmm. for for a lot lower of a price so starting local and letting the librarians know uh Mm -hmm. just reaching out to them that's one way and think about it too your local librarians would love to support local authors you know because your book sales are coming back into the community right um Mm -hmm. and people are gonna be more likely hey i know this person i'm gonna go pick up their book from the library right you know so why not yeah Yeah. one thing oh go ahead sorry okay sorry uh, the, the connection isn't the best today. Um, the one thing I like to do is tell my readers all about um, libraries and like remind them that my books are at libraries. So I will have it in my newsletter. I have it on my website. I will tell them again and again on social media. This book is now live, but ask for it in libraries. And I do get readers who will then go back to me and say like, yeah, I went to the library. And sometimes I like to kind of almost challenge readers, especially with the steamier stuff, like, go and shock your librarian by asking for this. (laughs) And again, some readers will take that challenge and see what happens uh, by asking for something particularly out there. So it's, yeah, you can make a game out of it. Fun. Yeah, definitely. I I got a second to tell your newsletter subscribers and your social media followers. Um, I did that two or three years ago now. when there was another big spate when ebook bike or whatever that one pirate site was really mm-hmm. getting hammered in the in the in the courts um which yay uh the good people won on that one um anyhow so i told my readers that hey these guys are looking like legitimate book sale sites where you can buy books from the author but they're pirate sites i'm like here's a better way if you want to get books for free to get your books for free go to your local library number one it supports your community support your your libraries and after I sent out 
and I, I gave him the, the Libby app. Um, I directed him a few other places. I can't remember where now. Cause like I say, it's been two or three years, but my sales on overdrive, I think that was the best period other than when I've run a couple promos in the last six months or so through draft to digital, that was my best sales period on through overdrive was just sending out an email saying, Hey, you guys, instead of grabbing a book from something that is probably not a legitimate site and is actually a pirate site for free, go to your library. And so, yeah, I mean, support your local libraries and let your readers know, mm -hmm. because I think, um, a lot of my readers at least didn't even think about it, that they could get the eBooks from their libraries. Like, oh yeah, you can. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, oh my gosh. No, I exactly. just had it's a always question. good to remind not... readers, not just of libraries, but of all like other alternatives. Mark seems to be frozen. Uh-oh, we lost Mark. I don't know about you guys. My internet connection is not real great either today, but we've got a kind of a blizzard going on. So, um, oh my goodness. Mark, do we have you back? Cece, are you still there? I'm here. <laughs> Maybe. We're having some technical difficulties today. Yep, looks like it. Hmm. That's a bummer. Um, yikes. There was a question posted in the group, and it was a post, not Ooh. on the live stream. And now I can't find it. And it was one I wanted to answer. Where'd it go? Is everybody back? Mark, you're muted. I don't know if that's on purpose or not. Uh, yeah, I was I was typing something oh, okay. to Sky uh, in the private comments. <laughs> I, I was having some weird weird connectivity issues. So Strange. yeah, so you saw you saw some other quite oh. Uh, how are the markets outside? Here's the question. I don't know if you, how are the markets outside the US handling AI narrated audio from Randall Wood? Hey, thanks Randall for putting your name in there because we couldn't see it on <laughs> Facebook user. Um, uh, how are markets outside the US handling uh, AI? So so one of the things I know, so market outside the US would be Kobo. I know Kobo Writing Life accepts mm -hmm. AI. Uh, so you've got the AI, for example, AI narrated audio from Google Play, which so long as you publish to Google Play, you can download and use. So I know that they haven't balked at it uh, when you, you can upload that directly to Kobo Writing Life. But I, it's a good question. I don't, I haven't really seen any differentiation by country yet about that content. It's usually by platform at this point in time. What about you guys? Same platform rather than than market. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think any of my I do have some AI narrated ones. I don't think I've seen like any difference in terms of sales compared to normal right. audiobook sales in terms of market. So yeah. yeah. I can't comment yet because I finally just got my first one released. <laughs> So I have no data. <laughs> oh, congratulations. That's exciting. Yeah. Good stuff. I'm really, really slow on getting these things done because I'd rather write the book <laughs> instead of messing <laughs> around with the formats right now. So, which is a good thing. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh my gosh. And Facebook is being absolutely weird. There was a post that I really wanted to answer and I can't remember what it was now because I got distracted <laughs> and now I can't find the post. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. But there seems to be an issue with visibility today. I was just told by my co-author that she couldn't find this stream at all, even though she knew it was going on. So I, it's I couldn't even like, really hiding us today. I had to actually navigate up to events and then find it. It didn't post it in my feed. It didn't show it in the group. So I'm going. I yeah, it's weird. So yeah, well, I mean, there's always the YouTube. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would su suggest you go to youtube.com slash wide for the win and go subscribe so you don't miss oh, yes. any of these updates. You get notified yes. whenever we're about to go live. So. And make sure you hit the bell to get the notifications because otherwise you won't be notified. A little bell. Hit the uh, bell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I, I subscribed to our channel over there and forgot to do that. And I'm going, why am I not seeing the live streams popping up? I'm like, oh, <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, that's so, why. Um, uh, I, I got another topic that I think might be interesting uh, potentially mm -hmm. for, for wide, because when I think about wide, wide isn't just 
Amazon versus the other platforms. It's all the different ways you can make money. Obviously, yeah. uh, libraries, public lending, right, in certain countries, not U.S., but uh, also Kickstarters and stuff. And and, and I mm -hmm. wanted to show you guys. I'm just going to go grab a book because it's just off, just out of reach here. So <laughs> Tanya Hales is an artist, and she is an amazing artist. I know her through Superstars Writing Seminars. And she did a Kickstarter for this thing called Animal Magica. And she's a, a she's a great writer, but a phenomenal artist. And so this is a coloring book. So she asked a whole bunch of us. So, the, I mean, the two Ringer authors in this are Kevin Janderson and James Owen, like two international best-selling authors. But she drew these pictures, and she got these uh, nice family-friendly microfiction stories that she paid everyone for. And oh, we cool. wrote a story specifically for for the artwork and it's all fantasy and, and I have a story in this as well. But the cool thing is, is not just this cool, awesome coloring book. So she used a Kickstarter to raise money so she could pay us for those. Now I bought a whole bunch of author copies cause I'm now gonna sell these because now finally I have some family friendly stuff when I, I'm gonna be at an event on Saturday. Um, and, and so she also has at the back, the whole back of the book is drawings She's got the drawings and then she also has lines so that you can go, you can go and, um, and write your own story. So it's for people okay. like maybe young writers or, or older writers who just want to write their own story too. Mm -hmm. But anyways, but this was a way. So, so I love the fact that uh, Tanya took, took a chance, asked a whole bunch of big name authors if they would be willing to submit a story. Cause the other thing that's important is it's worth asking, right? If you don't ask, you're mm -hmm. definitely not going to get yeah, and if you don't have and the actually, answers, always help. <laughs> and, and had to, I mean, it cost her a lot because she didn't just do it on standard print on demand paper. She did it on really high quality yeah. paper. So it's a really gorgeous, beautiful like book. Um, and, and of course, I was I was sitting beside Joanna Penn at Superstars Writing Seminars <laughs> a couple of weeks ago in Colorado. And so I, I gave Joe, signed a copy uh, for her because Joe was very, very intrigued by what Tanya had to say on a panel about Kickstarters as well as about you know, AI art and stuff like that. So that was a really, really cool, uh, uh, cool thing that you can do. And again, this is not something that you're necessarily going to ever buy an ebook. It's it's going to be a print book. And Tanya went went ahead and, and raised enough funds on Kickstarter. And and again, you don't have to be Brandon Sanderson, right? You don't have to make forty five million dollars on it. You can. It can just be several thousand dollars, or even let's be honest with you, even if it's a few hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, for for a beginning author who maybe has only published one book, they may be lucky to hit five hundred dollars. And I, again, I'm not trying to poo poo anyone. Uh, I just don't want beginning authors to feel like they're doing horribly if they haven't made six figures by the end of the first month, right? <laughs> I want people to have some realistic expectations. Speaking of, we did a, a podcast or a wide stream on that. I think was one of our very very first ones, or if not the very first one. So go check out through the YouTube channel. Um, no, that's projects like that are why I was so excited when Kickstarter first started, kind of hitting the indie author scene because I'm like, there's so much potential for projects like that that are not your typical novels or that are not going to do so well as sales on the retailers because they're they're so one artistic, two unusual formats and mediums. I'm like, that was, my brain kind of does this thing where it kind of, it sees a trend going on in the marketing sphere. And it's like, eh, don't need to worry about that. Too much time to learn it. <laughs> and then Kickstarter was one of those that my brain went like, oh, this is going to be big. Um, yeah. And it's going to be great. And I've backed a few projects, not actually books yet, oddly enough. Um, and I've talked about this before. There was an autism based or an autism specific board game that was kind of like D and D had been designed specifically for people on the autism spectrum. Um, my mm -hmm. daughter's autistic. So I was of course really keen to, you know, check this out. And it was like, so I backed the project and I still get updates about it years later. Um, awesome. You know, yeah. I mean, seeing, seeing stuff like that, that, you know, some big corporate monstrosity like Amazon is never going to pay attention to. It's never going to get the visibility. Kickstarter gives those projects a chance to be seen and it gives people a chance to support something they're passionate about. So I'm like, this is awesome. I love it. I can't wait to do my own because um, especially not so much for the romance because I'm, I'm a fantasy author first, even though I publish in romance, which doesn't make any sense. I know I'm weird. Um, <laughs> we like you like, anyway. I know. <laughs> I keep trying. Does it not look like a fantasy office? <laughs> it does not look like it a fantasy office. It looks like there's a lot of things going on in there. 
Yeah, <laughs> dragon. <laughs> you know, it's like with Kickstarter, like it, being a fantasy nerd, like I have Lord of the Rings swords in my office and it's like Kickstarter gives me a chance as a reader to get the other cool extras that I can't just go out and buy from my favorite authors. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm like, yeah, you bet your butt I'm going to support them on Kickstarter. Heck yeah. Um, <laughs> it's just it's fun. It's fun. Yeah. yeah um, Linda I, has I remember <laughs> years ago, I supported this on, it was the writer emergency pack on Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. And then they just did a new one yeah. and, and, and I supported it again. Cause again, it's just kind of like a writer's block and you go, Oh, here's a, here's a, something that can spark you just kind of a yeah. fun, uh, fun little thing. So yeah, it doesn't necessarily have to be books. It could be other creative projects mm -hmm. too, right? Yes. So, yeah. Uh, like we have I a want question. to do a coloring book for my dragons at some point. <laughs> there I you go. Fantasy. I know a really <laughs> good artist. <laughs> so. Good point. Because yeah, I can draw dragons, but I I do maybe two or three a year. So it's yeah. gonna take mm -hmm. me all that. Um, Lynn has you a do different. You do different design too. You want me to pop up the question? Yes. Yep. Let's do that All right. one. Linda asks, is it enough to put my books into overdrive on Kobo platform and get them into all the libraries or should I check the library distribution on Smashwords? Uh, if I can jump in on that, Linda, yes. one or the other, just do one. <laughs> Don't do it on all the platforms because overdrive will get all confused. So just pick one. And I honestly, yep. uh, I mean, I think overdrive's great. They're, they're a large wholesaler, but you can get you can get to overdrive through Kobo. You can get to it through Smashwords, Draft Digital, et cetera. You can get through it through other distributors as well, but just get to overdrive through one. But I would mm -hmm. recommend also getting it onto other library platforms because mm -hmm. BorrowBox, right? Uh, people, people in Australia, New Zealand, UK, Ireland, right? Libraries use BorrowBox there. So you're definitely not available to any of those libraries that use BorrowBox or mm -hmm. libraries that use Hoopla or Bibliotheca, et cetera. What do you guys think? I wanted to get to that one because it was a library question. We were talking about libraries earlier. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Linda. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yep, my local library is a, is a borrow box one. And so until Draft Digital started delivering to borrow box or distributing to borrow box, I wasn't able to get my eBooks into my local library. And so I'm really grateful mm -hmm. that oh, uh, no, you can. started doing that. That's new too, can... right? Borrow box so the last... Draft Digital. How long has it been since Draft Digital added Borrowbox? That's really new, isn't it? A year, maybe mm -hmm. a year and a bit. I can't. It's like it's not that long. I, the pandemic's a weird time, yeah. So, um, of course, you know, anymore a lot. Of, I'm sure a lot of our newer authors are going, "Oh, a year? That's been a long time ago." Like I've been at this for almost eleven years. A year seems like it was yesterday. <laughs> That's cool. Um, somebody asked, asked, "How do I find Borrowbox?" Um, well, borrow box, I think, um, if you're not in the territories, is not going to be visible to you there, but you mean, how did it get to borrow box? Probably. I'm guessing so. Log into draft to digital, go click on, uh, the publish page and scroll down. You'll see it under libraries. Just mm -hmm. click, click. Yes. <laughs> Submit. Mm. Uh, if that's the same person. Oh, yay. Laura. <laughs> You've got fans. <laughs> All right. Ooh, the question, that's your Laura. Favorite thing about being wide. Ooh, that's a really good question. And it's going to be a long it's answer nice. for all of us, I think. Exactly. I'm <laughs> just thinking, like, where should we start? <laughs> the fact that I can reach readers who don't want to shop on Amazon. Um, especially with my ebooks, because, you know, being an indie author, ebooks are still my biggest seller. Um, and not everybody, I know, scary thought, not everybody reads on Amazon. I don't read on Amazon. I am not a huge fan of their Kindle app. Um, I've had Kindles and I'm not keen on it. Um, I have Apple books is what I read most of them because I have Apple products. I've got iPhones and iPads and whatnot. And it syncs so seamlessly across my devices and it's always there. If I'm going to read an ebook, it's not going to be from Amazon. So... I like being able to reach those readers who also prefer not to read on Amazon or Amazon devices. Um, how about you guys? Oh, money too. <laughs> Amazon is also not in addition to the entire market. Um, I like money. <laughs> I, like, um, I like to eat. I like to buy books. I like to, you know, obviously have the books behind me here. Um, I like to feed my cows and my dogs and my cats. <laughs> you know? Good point. Um, how about you guys? 
I like being flexible. Um, I mean, yes, I love having multiple paydays and I love not being like relying on just one place. Um, mm -hmm. But I think my favorite aspect is being flexible and being able to try new things. Like I love experimenting and I love trying new formats and platforms all the time. And so when mm -hmm. there's a new app that comes along, I can go and sign up for that app and can give them my content because I'm not exclusive to anything. Mm -hmm. um, which is why I'm all over the place. Like I have my books, for example, my audiobooks are in an app at the moment. I'm their first indie author in that particular app. And so um, we're trying to like try and just see how it works before other indie authors get to join. But it's like really exciting stuff like that. And I wouldn't be able to do that if I was exclusive with what, just one platform. So yeah, mm. flexibility. And through that, lots of paydays. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, yeah, multiple paydays is what I was going to say because, you know, I get paid by Amazon a certain week every every month, but I get paid via, you know, uh, the different platforms. Uh, even with draft to digital right? Uh, you get paid from Apple at a certain date. And you get paid mm -hmm. from uh, Barnes & Noble at a certain date, stuff mm -hmm. like that. So the, the payments are coming in, in in chunks all over the place, and that can really, really add up. And it doesn't ever look like a lot of money if you're only looking at one platform, but when you look at it spread out, the other thing, and, and this just came up earlier today, a friend of mine, uh, Ed, is is going to be running a Kickstarter for an anthology project that he wants to do because he wants to pay the authors and he wants to have some money up front. And so as a mm -hmm. contributing author, I am off. I can, he said, well, what, what do you have that you can give away for prizes? I'm like, well, hey, I, I've got, you know, thanks to Book Funnel, I can yeah, I hear the eBooks, it's unlimited mm -hmm. or whatever. And A, I have a hundred Spotify codes. <laughs> I can give away the audiobook. So I have... I have choices and options, like you said, mm -hmm. Sky. I can just say, "Yeah, here you go." I'm not obligated to go. Oh no, I can't do. I can't do this because I'm I'm exclusive. I. Yes. So you have the flexibility to be able to say yes to things that are interesting. And you can experiment a lot more. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, especially in this market where everything is so fast moving and there's new developments all yeah. the time, yeah. and you don't want to be like stuck and yeah, bound to something. But definitely. Exactly. Well, and we've got a big post in wide for the win right now i'm not going to discuss the post itself but um we do frequently here and we actually got a, probably a couple hundred authors from the 20 books to 50k group into our group because somebody who was in ku their books had been picked up by a pirate site and ku kicked them out mm -hmm. and then refused to pay them for their royalties or their their page reads oh. because of the pirate site mm -hmm. um i don't know about you all and i'm pretty sure you're the same i don't want to trust my entire career and my entire income to a company that can decide whether or not it's with their terms of service um, that they cannot pay me for page reads legitimately earned just because my book yeah. was found on a pirate site that I have yeah, no that, control. I, over. Um, that, I, I really do. That scares me <laughs> because mm -hmm. um, my, my writing income is my, my family's primary income. Mm -hmm. So if I were all in on Amazon and Amazon were to, decide they were going to strip all my page reads because my book was on a pirate site, I would be screwed. My family yeah. would be screwed. Um, you know, so it's, yeah. it's a safety net for me being wide as well. It's not just, I mean, yeah. it's wiry wide, a lot of reasons. Um, multiple yeah. paydays, flexibility, um, being able to meet new people, being able to reach new platforms, having fun doing it, reaching all these different platforms. Um, there's a lot of reasons. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> but that was a great uh, question, though. Yeah. So I don't. I uh, have one. Flip okay. side of that. What is your least favorite thing about being white? <laughs> no, that's a great question. No, you know, it's good. I'm glad. I'm glad you brought that up, Susie, because I think it's important. So, what is your least favorite thing about being white? The number of places to manage files. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, that is a tough. It's a one lot of work, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It is a lot of work. I. I go, I publish direct as many places as I can. So it's a lot of places to maintain and update. Um, that's probably my biggest one. Yeah. Um, I just went back to one of one of my books, the first free in series, and realized that despite it doesn't matter how many times a book gets edited, et cetera, <laughs> I went through and and for the first time in years went through and just did a line by line through the entire eighty thousand word manuscript and found another thirty things that got missed and and, and I would even call them typos or typesetting errors or all the all the weird things you're like. Mm -hmm. Wow, that never even came up in any of the proofreads and stuff mm -hmm. like that that were done yeah. in any of the editorial passes. 
and and again, you know, I only log into four different, five different sites to get to, to all the places, <laughs> and yeah. I I just I had to make I had to make the updates. I had to do the print file. I had to do the ebook file. I'm not going to go back and do the audiobook file. And unfortunately, a lot of the a lot of the typos are things that you wouldn't hear, <laughs> <laughs> because fortunately, my narrator Scott often fixes those things automatically on the fly. <laughs> but uh, that's one of the things that was, it was a pain. It took me mm -hmm. hours on the weekend to just go through, no, yeah, never mind the work, but just to go through and go, oh, okay, I did this to Amazon. I did this to Kobo. I did this draft to digital. I did this to Google. I did this. It's like, oh yeah, I got to go change my book funnel, right? Files now. Mm -hmm. And then and then the direct sale one, which is part of the direct sales through book funnel. is like, oh yeah, I haven't done that yet. That's yeah. one of the frustrating <laughs> things is, is, is that to-do list. Oh, yes. Yeah, I actually, and I need to update it because I've added more platforms, but I actually have a giant printable checklist. It has the list of my books and it has interior file. It has cover file. It has book blurb. It has, and then it has, and you know, like each one of those above it is like Amazon, Barnes Noble, Apple, Kobo, Google Place, uh, <laughs> Street Live, Draft Digital, Smashwords, Book Funnel, Pay Hip Store. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> it's a lifesaver because then I can just print it out and go check, 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 check as I get it done. Um, right. But I just realized, speaking of Book Funnel the other day, I just realized that I have one of my books has not been updated there in like four years. So <laughs> it still has an old, old, old um offer for a re reader magnet that i haven't used in four years and i'm like oh crud um so yeah that's that's probably the biggest downside and i think for a lot of people the amount of things to learn about <laughs> <laughs> randall wood says so you need a tool that makes it easier to update files across multiple platforms and randall wood for anybody who isn't uh, is new to the group <laughs> is the uh, founder of scribe count which is an amazing um software program or web app whichever you want to call it i'm not that technically inclined but you can track all your sales your advertising across it in one space if you see people posting in, in the facebook group those beautiful colorful graphs of where all their sales are coming <laughs> from that's scribe count yeah saves me so much time i can quickly just oh, go yes. and look there <laughs> Uh, yeah. Because I do have to look. I'm sorry, I do, uh, and I don't want to log into 15 different dashboards to see my sales. Yes. Scribe count makes it easy. Um, we had another. Uh, oh, go ahead. Um, one thing I will recommend, just while we're talking about software, there's it's yeah. not to update files, but it is to upload the book yeah. first. Is Wide Wizard? It is my absolute yeah. favorite tool because you can put in your metadata, and then it up automatically um, just adds it. <laughs> everywhere <laughs> let's talk yeah. about that later <laughs> yeah. um but so no randall and randall and company are really great about um asking authors what they would like to see and what tools they want um right so if yes. you ever yeah. you know have a wish list reach out to randall <laughs> team <laughs> Uh, there's a callback to this was um uh i think this was borrow box I, yeah. I, yeah, I'm biased and I work for draft to digital, but the only way I'm aware of to get to borrow box is through draft to digital. So that's how to get your books there. So, yeah. um, unless, I think unless there was another one. how do I, oh, how do I, same question. Sorry. I thought yeah. I saw a different one, but that was the same yeah. one. Um, but there is another Linda, question. Again, yeah. Do you advertise to all the platforms equally? Generally? Yes, I try to, um, I might pick a year like last year was Barnes and Noble. The year before was Apple. This year's right. Kobo. Um, next year I might focus on Google Play, just because sometimes it is easier to focus on one platform to grow your audience there. Yeah. Um, and rotate. Um, but generally, if I'm running like Facebook ads, I try to make sure I'm advertising to all of them. And I will. I have done both. Um, ads where I have listings for all the major retailers. And then I will have some where I specifically focus just to that one retailer um, right. to varying des degrees of success with like any Facebook ad, you got to find what works and what that particular audience wants to see and what they're going to click on, um, which is why I don't do too many of them because I'd rather write the books. Yeah. <laughs> I think, um, I mean, the newsletters, I use a, a newsletters a lot, right. For price drops. So I, I tend to use, obviously it's hard to get a book bub, but you try for a book bub, mm -hmm. then you go to written word media, 
bargain booksy, free booksy, uh, with a promo I just finished running uh, in February. I ended up, I tried Crave Books this time uh, mm -hmm. because I wanted to go in. And what I liked about Crave Books is it'll, like, there's a whole bunch of different platforms. <laughs> I could just go in with one sort of one fell swoop of a, a shopping cart and go, oh, this mm -hmm. one and this one and this one and this one and this one. And I think I picked six. And five mm -hmm. of them, the, the times I wanted were eligible, paid for it in a single fell swoop. And I had seven promos in a row. So that's mm -hmm. one way of doing it. With BookBub, if I was uh, also purchasing a BookBub ad, BookBub allows you to target specific retailers. And you can either target, if you really want to focus, like Susie said, I'm going to I'm gonna just focus on BNN this quarter or this year mm -hmm. and just see what you can do to ramp, ramp it up. But you can even uh, put unique links. Right, so you can can have a link to your website uh, or or some other site that's not one of the big retailers if you're trying to, you know, trying to get more readers. Now, just remember, people who sign up for BookBub are typically saying, "I read on Kindle or Kobo or Nook or mm -hmm. Apple or whatever the case may be." So it, it's they're going to have lesser, fewer, fewer customers uh, on those other platforms. I think. Um, I don't actually advertise equally. I just realized, uh, which is interesting, because I, well, I don't run paid ads for Sky. I only run paid ads occasionally for my other pen name. And those mm -hmm. are only Amazon ads because I don't like spending money, which is why I don't. I've experimented with Facebook ads, but I can't be bothered because they cost money uh, with my the ads that I set up ages ago on Amazon they still work more or less and so I just turn mm -hmm. them on for Halloween and Christmas and then I turn them off after um, so the only paid advertising I do is Amazon but that's also because the best adverts or like best way of getting sales I think on other retailers is their retailer promos which are usually free uh, mm -hmm. on Kobo and Barnes and Noble and Apple and yeah. Draft a Digital to other places um, which is much, I think, easier because, again, you don't have to spend money and money spending mm -hmm. is evil. Um, well, I mean, I know lots of people who do really well by spending a lot of money on ads and then making a good profit, but it's just not part of my strategy. Um, yeah. Same. So, yes, for in that case, it's not equal. Although when I do BookBob or something, of course, it's equal because it goes to, like, technically all the links of all the platforms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so you related to this... You yeah. <laughs> Related. Um, how do you grow your Barnes and Noble and Kobo as well? Facebook ads. Um, like Sky just mentioned, for me so far, the best way, aside from a BookBub, BookBub is still the king, queen, whichever you want to call it. Um, in house promo. King and queen. King and queen. <laughs> it's the ruler. It is the sovereign. <laughs> um, what do you guys say? I mean, for me, it's still the in-house promos. Um, Barnes and Noble for sure. Kobo, I have better luck getting BookBubs than I have of getting Kobo promos, mostly because I forget to apply for Kobo what? promos. <laughs> but even so- You have um, to apply, you have to ask to get. <laughs> I know. Um, I think my acceptance rate for book bubs is like 40 to 50%. I mean, it's pretty good. And wow. my Kobo acceptance rate is like 5%. So I'm like, wow. oh my gosh. Okay. Um, um, mine is the opposite. But, I get like, one in every 90 or something applications is, my, is when I get a book bub. I think my record is 94 rejections in between book bubs, but then oh, I get pretty much every Kobo promo I apply to. So I've had like 500 Kobo promos in total. And wow. they work. <laughs> they do. Okay, um, book, so it helps. Yeah. Especially like if you use the perma-free strategy, the Kobo promos, I've had a couple of them. I think it was the editor's pick free book mm -hmm. that was actually... I think doubled what I would normally get in downloads from a book bub. Um, and it's been a few years since I got one of those because it's more competitive and I've already run a couple of my, my, my perma free, I've already run it a couple of times through that one. So they're not as inclined to use it again, um, which is understandable. I'd rather get, they give it to somebody, you know, who's never run one before. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so, I mean, their promos are definitely apply for them. Like, don't be like me, actually apply for them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word one good way uh, of getting similarly i would say go ahead Mark. um with with barnes and noble kobo and apple you got to remember they're unlike amazon where the inmates run the asylum that they have humans they have oh, people from the, the book industry 
who 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 actually look at the books and because there's humans that do things and it's not gamed the way that Amazon is always gamed where the lowest price always wins they often are selecting really expensive books from traditional publishers so you're competing with a a bigger scale of 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 operatives and that's where on those platforms you're making 70% or 60% if you're going through a distributor um, mm -hmm. on those larger platforms so if you have a series or you have lots of books doing larger box sets where the price goes north of 999 can actually help you uh, get get a bit more traction on those platforms where that's not even a thing you can do on Amazon because it's not it's not no, a thing it's not. So. yeah yeah so like speaking of the big box sets above, you know, north of 99, 9.99, um, I have my 10 book set. I priced it at 39.99 and man, I'll tell you what, it's so nice to see the sales from that one box set come in because it's like, oh cool, I just made, you know, 30 bucks in a fell swoop, you know, after the cut. I um, love that. Yeah. It yeah. Is, it's fun. Those are the and best. Then, the other thing too is like you know somebody has all 10 books so they have all 10 books they can read and then really fall in love with your writing style or you know, four books, if you do a four book set. Um, plus, you know, if you're above 999, you're still making that 70% instead of 35%. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it is fun. And those ones, I mean, I have not, other than I have a blurb, a little blip on my very, my homepage for my website, I have done absolutely zero other advertising for those box sets. And they sell about a copy a day across, you know, whichever. I mean, it'll be hit and miss either Apple or Barnes Noble or yeah. Kobo. Um, Google Play, for some reason, I don't know if you guys can answer this, um, don't sell as many copies of that set there, but like Apple right. and Barnes Noble and Kobo readers love it. So I have a Google Play tip. Ooh, Google yay. Play tip. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can mm -hmm. DIY coupon codes at Google Play Books Partner Center. You go in, you make your own coupon code. So what I've done recently is said, Okay, especially if you like a first free in series, what's really, really hard is to convert freegans to purchasers. They download the free book, they get to the end of the book. It's hard for them to buy the next book for $5 yeah. in the series, for example. But you create a coupon code for the next book on Google Play. You copy the code for that. Maybe you make it 99 cents, 75% off some deal. At the mm -hmm. very end of the book, you say, hey, if you want to get book two at a special price at Google Play, click here to get it for this price. And then while they're reading it, right at the end, you've got the link, you've got the special price. It's still listed at $4.99 or whatever your regular price is, but that's built right into the end matter of the book, which you can do directly on Google. And that may be a way of trying to get that person. Maybe it was a 99 cent first book, or maybe it was whatever, but you get them to the end of the book. And if you like it, there's more, but, but there's a mm -hmm. coupon code and it's only here, right? So that could be... That could be something you could play with. And then, of course, there's Google's new um, series bundle feature, which has been really good for me. Yeah. Um, and tell, tell us um, about that. Well, I the good thing that. is because I've been in there better, I've got quite a lot of data because I've been having access to it for a while now. Yeah. And big discounts have definitely been really worth it. So mm -hmm. I've got, for example, for my longest series, which is eight books, I've got a 30% discount for if people buy five or more books in the series. And I thought that would cannibalize on my box set sales maybe, but I, so I only did that for one series just to see what happens. And actually in terms of profit, I make more on that series now than I did before the bundles. So even if you calculate that, that maybe I sell one or two box sets less a week, it's still mm -hmm. worth it. Um, I love that. And so, yeah, I've, I've generally even seen that people are willing to, get more books um for example i have one six book series and i have one tier is three books and one tier is five or more books and two-thirds of people are actually taking the five or more books option uh really? rather than just putting yeah. two or three um to be fair that's one series where there isn't a first in series free so they are going in mm -hmm. like completely blind they're sometimes buying wow. all six books without having had a taste of it just because they can get that 30 percent off that yeah. way and and, and your books look awesome too i mean right yeah <laughs> oh first they do obviously they're all pretty <laughs> gorgeous <laughs> they're all colorful and pretty um so you have to make the whole package work i mean people have to but that's the same thing for everywhere you have to have mm -hmm. an enticing yeah. cover and blurb and uh everything that kind of is genre appropriate but anyway um 
highly recommend playing around with the series bundles. Um, and there's some other cool features coming soon, like oh. the series this, uh, series subscription. You may see it. Um, I've oh. I saw it. Are you a, are you a beta or alpha user on all kinds of things there that you just not can't for that about? yet? But I saw okay. it. I saw it on someone else's. Um, oh um book where there's now a subscribe to series button and i yeah. asked google about it and they say we don't have control over it yet like us authors but eventually we will be able to set a discount too so let's say 10 percent discount if people subscribe right. to the series and then automatically buy every single book we release oh i love that, that I, I, so we're nice. we're trying to get sabrina or someone from the google play team to yes, come i've talk. got her um we're oh. going to have a podcast with her we just um, need to get her scheduled just need to figure out when. So stay exactly. tuned. Just, just right. talking about yeah. dates with her now. So yeah, we'll. Oh, that'll be fun. We'll that'll that be great. That's, that's I, I love what they've done in the last yes. year, what, several years. They've last really years, come yeah. to town. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, used um, I used to hate their dashboard. It was mm -hmm. so clunky and such a pain. And now yeah. it's one of my well. Most yeah. of the wide retailers are my favorites now because they have done such a good job of listening to what authors need and want from them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That. It's just, it's so much more intuitive now. You can just go in there, you can click, yeah. you can do what you need to do without yeah. having to really think about it, without fighting the system. And it's just, oh, I love the Google Play team. Thank you guys so much if you ever watch this. <laughs> for all yes. the love in the authors and all the, the fun <laughs> things you're giving us because it's great. We appreciate it. Um, it's book people at Google. It's yeah. like they let them uh, take the wheel. As yes, opposed yeah. to the tech people. <laughs> yeah. Well, and so. see, this is what we love about, you know, the Google Play team, the Apple team, the Barnes & Noble team, and the Kobo team. They're all run by real people who love books, not by yeah. bots who are paying attention to numbers. You yeah. know, so it's, it's well, so, okay, so there's another reason why we love being wide, right? The wide <laughs> yes, retailers, exactly. they love their yeah, authors, yeah, and exactly. they love books. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, Yes. Well, and um, that's the other thing is look at the retailers too, right? Like, you know, pick a retailer that you're not familiar with. Go and browse and check it out in the native environment. So on an Apple product, mm -hmm. go and look at the Apple store and see what they're doing yeah. and know that they, the stuff they do in Canada is different than the States and the difference is different in the UK and different in Australia. Same thing for Kobo. Well, Barnes & Noble, it's the same all over because all over is only America. But you can see what they're featuring. You can see what, what the stores look like. Yeah. That'll help you a lot understand how to market to a place. You got to know what's what the place yeah. is doing to market books too, right? Yeah, I will teach you yeah. things like, for example, going back to Barnes & Noble, um, one way to get traction there is their categories because their categories are so different from other mm -hmm. places. They are amazing. Yes. They, yeah. are they are created by- Karen and I went people. over this last week. Yeah. <laughs> we, we oh, went, sorry. They're we might have had a BNN love, category love fest last week. Oh, yes. Because they are. I totally agree with this. Their categories are amazing. As a reader, I don't, if I'm searching for something specific, I will go to Amazon. But if I want to just browse for a kind of book, I go straight to Barnes & Noble now. Because yes. their categories are that awesome. Yeah. Captured, um, indentured, find, enslaved. Yes. It's the best category ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 90% oh of my God. books fit into that category. It's so much like, fun. <laughs> Barnes and Noble is the only one that actually has a small town romance category. Everybody else goes with the um, BISAC no. categories, which is yes. fiction literature, small town. But I mean, Barnes and Noble actually has a small town romance, which is a romance. huge category. It's a huge, so yeah, I'm surprised that, I mean, yeah. because it's based on BISAC uh, book industry subject and classification mm -hmm. codes, right? That's, that's, yeah. that's the class. And, and you would think that considering how big small town romance has been for years, obviously you and Aaron have been living full time off of it. And you're yeah. just two of many authors that you would I think that there would be enough Cat, enough books in the category that uh, that it should be part of the industry standard. And and Bizac's always a, a few years behind uh, to add yeah. new categories. I have I have actually emailed them repeatedly for that. And a couple of years ago, they did at least add the small town for fiction and literature, yeah. small town and rural. Um, and they also added the clean and wholesome, which I'm like, no, I don't want that. I'm like small town romance. And I'm like, I gave them a list of, okay, so Nora Roberts has several small town romance series. Robin Carr, who has the Virgin yeah. River Netflix series as well now. So, I mean, it's, it's expanding yeah. into TV as well. So plus, you got mm -hmm. Susan Mallory, Rand. I mean, like, I have a really long list of, like, 50 authors right. that all sell millions of copies every year, you know? And it's like, yeah. can we get this category, please? 
Um, <laughs> I mean, in Canada, all we have is small towns. So, you know. <laughs> Montana's the same way. That's all we have is small towns. Our biggest city is still smaller than the, the, the small town in California we lived in for a year. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going for all small towns. Um, but no. We have been more lucky with uh, polyamory that they they released that as a category a while ago and as someone who writes a lot of yeah. reverse harem that was great but it still doesn't exist on amazon so that's like again oh, wow yeah wide for the win the category has been wide for probably two years now maybe almost wow. uh, whenever the last bisac update came out and it's taken you a while from the bisac update to get into the different stores but it's still not on amazon wow yeah interesting wow. So. Well, and that's something else um, for anybody listening. Don't be afraid to email bisg.org. They're the ones that run the, the, the BISACs. Um, if you have a category that you see is taking off um, that you write, by all means, email them. Give them examples um, you know, of books yeah. that are selling really well, of authors who are selling really well in that category. Because the better that that categorization system gets, the easier it's going to be for us to actually make our books findable for readers that are looking for that. Right. Um, you know, it's like putting a book just in contemporary romance, which is the one I use as my primary. Contemporary romance is huge. It covers, um, to some, you know, romantic suspense is categorized or lumped in without a lot. Um, it covers small town. It covers everything. Billionaire romance is considered um, contemporary, contemporary romance. And it's definitely not small town. I mean, you got two different, it's still romance, yes, but it's two very yeah. different audiences but they all get 100 100 air romance is is small town romance right yeah no not billionaire um, I, no, don't make the mistake don't email bizac uh bisg and say hey we need a category for tall bald white middle-aged yeah, uh, canadian men writing fiction because they're not going to they're not going to add no. that i already tried yeah make sure it's a big or enough like, category. Um, okay so sci-fi romance sky mm -hmm. that is again yes. i mean look at all the subcategories you have i mean you've got your alien romance like you write you've also got like straight up sci-fi that just happens to have mm -hmm. a central romance um yes. so that would be nice to like split those guys out because yeah. as a reader i may only want the alien romance i, I may not want straight up sci-fi um, yes although we know, are to be fair grateful to already have a sci-fi romance category in retailers yes. because we don't yet in bookbub and in bookbub they combine sci-fi with all of paranormal oh. so please oh, yeah, if someone yeah, yeah. is listening who is writing sci-fi romance please email bookbub we had a lovely mm -hmm. discussion with the bookbub people at nink at the nink conference and they told us if yeah. enough people are asking they might think about doing yes. that so please yeah. email them and that's and such say a that you want big category romance. now it's huge I'm, and it's I'm trending surprised. everywhere. So and it's, it's so such different. It's a hot category. I'm surprised that they haven't yes. done it yet. And um, it's very different if, whether you want vampires or aliens. So it's two quite yeah. different things. Hi, Mark. <laughs> oh, where'd he go? We lost Mark. We've um, lost Mark. Yeah. There he is. I had Woo! to go close the door because Liz just came home and the dogs were just making noise and stuff. So. We <laughs> but we're we're we got aliens. like. Two minutes left uh, for the top of the hour. So, any closing thoughts? Had a fun one. We've it's had a wide fun. variety of questions. Yeah, thanks it's for the questions, fun. guys. Yes. Yeah. Wide is fun. That's, I think, the the. It uh, is. Kind of summary. So, my of challenge, them. my challenge to you, dear wide, uh, wide Hi, curious ladies. author, if you're not publishing wide, is go check out a retail platform that you have not yeah. yet shopped or browsed as a customer. Yeah. Get a little bit more familiar with it and and then maybe you'll learn a little bit more about that retailer and that could potentially give you spark some ideas for stuff you can yes. do that and if you live in a non-us country go check out public lending right oh yeah yeah oh, yeah. Public, yeah yeah plrinternational.com <laughs> yay all awesome. right well thanks everybody for uh joining us on the show it's been a lot of fun bye go. bye, bye. Thanks for watching. Be sure to join the Facebook group over at facebook.com slash groups slash wide for the win. Or subscribe to us so you don't miss these live videos, these wide streams over at youtube.com slash wide for the win. <laughs>